As we've developed these two graphs, you might have noticed a slight inconsistency between them. In our aggregate demand and aggregate supply graph, we're measuring the price level on the vertical axis, whereas in our Phillips curve graph, we're measuring inflation on the vertical axis, where inflation is the change in the price level rather than the price level itself. Now it turns out that there's a way of deriving the aggregate demand and aggregate supply graph with inflation rather than the price level measured on the vertical axis. And that version of the curves allows for an easier interpretation that includes the role of expectations about inflation the way that we talked about them in the Phillips curve. And for that reason, the version of the aggregate demand and aggregate supply graph that has inflation on the vertical axis is the preferred version among macroeconomists. We developed the graph with the price level on the vertical axis because it was a more natural stepping stone as we developed the material. But we can now realize that there is a version of the aggregate demand and aggregate supply graph that has inflation on the vertical axis. And that version looks very similar to this version. But once we have inflation on the vertical axis rather than the price level, the two graphs become exact mirror images of one another. They both have inflation on the vertical axis. And the graph on the left says that expansionary policy can cause a temporary increase in GDP above the natural level, but at the cost of ending up with higher inflation in the long run. Just as the graph on the right says that expansionary policy can result in a temporary reduction in unemployment, but at the cost of being stuck with a higher level of inflation in the long run. So in both cases, we see that the cost of using expansionary policy to go beyond the natural level in the economy is a higher rate of inflation. And both graphs rely on some assumptions about how quickly expectations about inflation change. So imagine being a worker, you've received a higher nominal wage, and then you see prices rising. Do you slowly adapt your expectations about what the new inflation rate is going to be? Or do you rationally see through things and know that the inflation rate is going to increase because your nominal wage increased. In the one case, we say you have adaptive expectations, and in the other case, we say you have rational expectations. Now, the more adaptive your expectations, the slower they change about the rate of inflation as prices go up. That makes room for a shallower short-run Phillips curve, and more room for expansionary policy to result in temporary reductions in unemployment. So the short run is longer, the more adaptive our expectations about changing inflation are. The more rational our expectations are, the more quickly we change our expectations about what the inflation rate will be, and the steeper these short run Phillips curves will be. That leaves less room for expansionary policy to cause temporary reductions in the unemployment rate or temporary increases in the GDP above the natural level. So how effective you think expansionary policy is at producing temporary increases above the natural levels of GDP or decreases below the natural level of unemployment depends on how rational you think expectations are. And that defines a huge difference in different models within macroeconomics. The more rational we think expectations are, the more the Phillips curves become steep. And if we think that expectations are fully rational, workers would immediately adjust their expectation about inflation as their nominal wages increase. That makes no room for expansionary policy to actually lower the unemployment rate below the natural rate. And the short-run Phillips curves become exactly the same as the long-run Phillips curve. In the same way, if we think expectations are fully rational, then there's no room for expansionary policy to cause increases in GDP above the nominal level in the short run. Because now, the short run aggregate supply curve would lie just on top of the long run aggregate supply curve. So how effective you think government policy might be at causing changes in the economy 
beyond the natural level depend on how adaptive you think expectations are.